Hello and welcome to Get Started. I'm Merlin and in this video it's time to go fast as the Space Marines bring in the swift and deadly Outriders to help them combat the Necrons. Not only do we build a brand new unit for our Space Marines, we also add a set of ruins to our gaming terrain selection. In episode 4's paint guide, I'll teach you how to add some extra details to our in Outrider Sergeant, as well as improving our weathering techniques on terrain features. Then, in our mission, we learn the rules about the morale phase. We also learn about combat attrition tests, and how models interact with ruins in our games of Warhammer 40,000. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves of the Mad Merlin's health and safety tips. 1. Work in a well-lit and well-ventilated area, especially when using glues. 2. Have a flat and stable surface to work on. Kitchen table or computer desk is ideal. 3. Seek adult supervision, especially when using sharp tools such as modelling clippers and hobby knives. And 4. Take your time and don't rush yourself. Read your instructions carefully and also look over your frames before you start making any cuts with your clippers. Okay, time to begin building. Grab yourself frame E. This is the Outrider frame from your Command Edition box. You'll also need the three oval bases to mount your Outriders on. Then you'll need terrain frame A and terrain frame B. These build up our ruins. Right, I'll see you at the paint desk. Okay, let's begin with building our Outrider Sergeant. So the first components we're going to need make up the bike chassis. These are parts 25, 26, 27A and 27B. Let's cut them out and clean them up. So. We've got 27A, the tyre, all the way back here. The chassis components, 25 and 26, are at the bottom end of the sprue. Just work your way around, cutting off all those tabs, taking care at the back here, we don't want to cut off this bar. And we also don't want to damage the tabs that go into the base. And finally, we want 27B, the inside rim of the wheel. Right, I'll get those cleaned up and we'll continue. So the first parts we need to put together are 27A and 27B. This finishes off the front wheel. Just line up and lower in position the inside rim like so. Then We need parts 26 and we're going to push the front wheel onto this post here and then finally closing parts 25 into place with a snap like so. So we can actually set the bike off to one side as next we need to start building the actual rider. So for this, we need pieces 28, 29, 30, 31, and 34. So, if we look on our frame, we've got part 29 here, his front torso. Just be careful, 
clipping off around the tabs. You don't want to damage those tabs as those are important to hold the arms on. We've also got 31, he's backpack. Thirty-four here. It's his arm again. Be careful of the details on the bike. So you've got the end of the handlebars you want to be careful with. There we go. So part thirty is his rear torso just here. We've got two small posts at the bottom where the legs join on later. Be careful around them. And finally, part 28 is his head. Right. I'll get this cleaned up and we're ready to proceed. Okay, with those cleaned up, ready to start assembling our components together. So first we want to take parts 30 and 28. And we want to rest and we want to rest the head in a notch just there. Then we'll take part 29, lining up the peg holes, push together, and that will lock the head in place. Next we can take part 30 and push it into place, 31 even and push it into place like so. Next we can bring back the bike. We want to push our sergeant into the saddle and then the handlebars on top of the tank like so. We can set this guy aside again as we need to start clipping out our next components. Okay, we're halfway through our build. Next we'll add the front fairing and the exhausts, which come attached to the sergeant's legs. So, these are components 35 and 36. So, we've got 35 there, the sergeant's right leg with his attached helmet. So just carefully cut away around these. Good idea to cut here first so we don't put any extra stress on the exhausts. So we don't want them snapping. Just work your way around. There, that's part 35. And part 36 is this one here with the little groove in his leg. That's where his chainsaw will go. So again, we'll cut around the model until it's clipped out and away from the frame. All right, I'll get those cleaned up and I'll show you how to assemble them. Okay then. With parts 35 and 36 cleaned up, we're ready to attach them to our bike. So we'll start with 35, which goes on the right hand side with the larger holes. Push this in place and click our legs into position. Next, we'll bring in 36 and do the same. This time we'll push the holes through Pegs through, just like so, into the holes. And line up all our pegs and tabs, like so. Then we should have a pretty much neat front fairing there. So, at this point, we're ready to attach our Outrider Sergeant to his base. You might find this a little bit difficult 
if you've not glued the model down as the front wheel is still loose so it's really it's not going to do ah, there we go There we go. Right, we just have three components left to attach. So these are his left and right arm and his chainsaw. So his right arm is part 32, the one holding the bolt pistol out. Just clip around, being careful of your fingers. Part 37 is his chainsaw just up here. And finally, part 33 is his left arm. Just a single cut, like so. Right, I'll get those cleaned up. So, we can bring in our Outrider Sergeant and we can just push left arm into place, right arm into place, and finally his chainsaw go into the notch on his leg, like so. This bit is an extra bit on the loose side, so you will definitely need to glue this in. But there we have our Outrider Sergeant complete, and now we can begin our ruins. So here we have Ruins Frame A. Both build the exact same way near enough, so I'll show you how to build these. Much like our pipes, the ruins are designed to go together without the need of glue. If you want a more stable hold, just apply a little bit of glue on the yellow contact areas as shown in your command manual. The only other difference between our pipes and these is we have quite a few uh, connecting tabs, more than we are usually used to dealing with. We also have this large star tab in the center of our large wall. This will need to be removed so that part two can go in its place. So the only pieces that must go together exactly as the instructions say are these two smaller ruins, the two larger ones, so these frame, this, these two on this frame and the larger two on the other frame can freely be mixed between the two frames to make varying different types of ruins. How you build them is entirely up to you. I do suggest though, for the larger ruins, not to use any glue. They will hold together fairly well without the need for any cement to hold them in place. And they'll look good regardless of how you build them. So, there's not much to show, so we'll just go straight ahead. What we'll do is I'll clip all this off off camera and clean it up and I'll show you how they go together. Okay, with our ruins all clipped out, we're ready to begin assembly. The first piece we build and the easiest will be our small piece of ruin. So this just has a simple connection tab pushing in like so and squeezing until firmly sealed. As I mentioned earlier, these pieces can only ever go together in one way and as such you can easily glue them together. So our larger ruins are a little bit more intricate. So first off, we've got this Cog Mechanicum vent, which goes in here. Don't make the mistake I did in my Imperium guide, 
where I cut out and got this one muzzled up with the other one. I, um, uh, I almost glued it in place, but you have to make sure the pipes feed into the cogs in the correct places. So pay close attention when you're building these kits for that purpose only. Other than that, we can now push together in the same way as our smaller rune. These go together a little tighter, but perseverance and plenty of elbow grease. We'll get our runes put together quite nicely. Like I said at the beginning, the Walls can be interchanged with the larger walls on the other kit. You can make a too large wall and a too small wall building. Either way, your flooring sections will interlock with either way. So what I would suggest doing if you wanted to keep the flooring more stable is to glue this short piece into this wall as it won't be then attached to this wall so you can easily remove this wall and then glue this piece into this wall as the larger plate uh, flooring on frame B will interconnect with this section here so you can easily build the two different types of runes you can make from this set which is ideal as you can easily grab a second set of this in the command edition expansion which i'll be talking about in my expanding video at the end of the series but there we have it that's our ruins built so let's throw some paint on them with this episode's paint guide there you have it a brand new unit for our space marines and a set of ruins to add to our terrain collection next up We'll add unique details to our Outrider Sergeant, as well as painting details and improving our weathering on our terrain features. To prepare, make sure you go back and watch Video 3's paint guide and paint the ruins up to the same standard as I painted the pipes in in that video. Also before next video, you'll need to get hold of a piece of sponge. This is going to be used for a brand new painting technique that I'm going to teach you. So that's it for this video. I've been Merlin, this has been Get Started, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time, goodbye.